everyone welcome back to my channel my name is Ashley and I like to talk about books and in this reading vlog I'm going to be reading A Little Life by Hanya Yanagihara this is actually future Ashley that you're speaking to I've already finished the book I've already finished the vlog I just filmed the conclusion of this vlog and I wanted to wait until the end to film the beginning to be able to set you up for what you're gonna see in this vlog because there was a lot of different ways I could have done this so I wanted to make sure that I set expectations clear for people coming into this so first of all I want you to know that a little life is a very heavy traumatic book there are a lot of heavy traumatic topics discussed in this book. The way it is written is very engrossing and it feels very realistic. So there are many, many trigger and content warnings that you should know before going into this book or even before going into this video, honestly. So I'm going to be leaving all of those in the description box below. I would also ask that if there's anything that I miss, please let me know in the comments so I can add it to the description box so I can cover everything that needs to be covered. I also am going to include timestamps in this video so you will be able to click on the chapters and see different parts. So if you're interested in the experience of me reading the book, you can find those sections and see my reactions as I'm reading the book. If you're interested in some of the discussion topics that I talk about at the end, then you can go see those as well. I talk about things like, is this book worth reading? Is this the great gay novel? Is it about friendship or enablers? Would I recommend this book to people and more? So I'm gonna have all that sectioned out so you can find exactly what you're looking for. And I also am not going to be including any spoilers in this vlog. I know this is a very long book and many people are interested in it but intimidated by the size and so they don't get around to reading it or they're intimidated by the idea that it's gonna make them cry because that's what a lot of people say. And so I know there's probably a lot of people who are gonna be coming to this video looking for those spoilers. I, however, did not want to include them in this video because I personally just didn't wanna talk about a lot of the things that happened in this book. It is very heavy, it is very traumatic, it affected me while reading it, and that's just not something I wanted to talk about in a video per se, but I'm sure there are resources out there where you can get those spoilers, so if I can find any, I will link them in the description box below if that's what you're here for because you're not gonna get that here. I'll also say I was inspired to read this book and make this vlog because of Noelle Gallagher and Kat from Paperback Dreams. Both of them have read this book and vlogged their experience reading it and I enjoyed their videos a lot so I will link their videos down below too so you can check those out if you want to see other people's experience reading this book. And I think that is all that I had to say at the beginning. I will warn you this book is not for the faint of heart. It is seriously the most traumatic thing I've ever read in my life. I knew that going in, I knew it was going to be traumatic and very sad and very heavy, but I just had this idea in my mind of what it could possibly be based off of books I've seen it compared to. And it was multiple times worse than that, like worse than I ever could have imagined. Really just the most traumatic book I've ever read. So I just think that's so, so important to know and keep in mind while you're reading the book, thinking about if you wanna read it or even just watching this vlog and the things that I talk about in the end. But yeah, I think that was everything I wanted to cover. So I'm gonna send you back in time to past Ashley as she started reading this book so you can hear what I thought as I was reading it. Okay, so I just got through part one, Lispenard Street. So far, it's pretty much just been introducing us to the four main characters. So we have Malcolm, Jude, JB, and Willem. And so far, I don't care a ton about Malcolm and JB, but Willem and Jude are the sweetest baby angels, and I can just already sense the sadness that is coming in this story. So I am scared. part two which was the postman that part was all about Jude mostly so you learn a lot about his background and how he got to where he is today and how he's connected to his friends and some other characters start coming in I have already cried <laughs> I I'm 
hardly into the book and I've already cried. That doesn't bode well for the rest of my experience reading this book, but they were happy tears. It was just like there was a really sweet moment that Jude had in his life and I just couldn't help but cry. The way this is written, you really can't help but get super, super, super connected to these characters. I'm on page 240 to get through the first two parts of this book and like sometimes I read books that are 240 pages or shorter so you've really spent a lot of time with just getting to know who these characters are and setting up the story so anything that happens it like feels like it's happening to your friend already so yeah I'm nervous as to how it could go from here but now I'm going on to part three which is vanities. This is going to go on record as the reading vlog that I look the most messy in, but that's going to have to be fine. So I have now finished part three, Vanities. I will now be moving on to part four. As you can see where the first bookmark is in here, that's how far I am into the book. So that is 320 pages, but these pages just feel extra long because there's not a lot of line breaks. It's like a really full like margin to margin, just like tons of text on the page. So it takes longer to read than normal. It's already an 800 something page book. It's also just written so well that I am not finding myself wanting to skim any sections. I'm invested in all of the characters. The character I'm the least invested in is probably JB and I just finished a section on him and even then I was still reading everything because it still involves all the other characters because it's all about their friendship and their life together so yeah I'm not finding myself wanting to skim sometimes I find with longer books that they are kind of repetitive and it feels like this didn't really need to be that long I don't really feel like anything that's happened so far has been repetitive I feel like it's all just been building up all the characters, building up their friendship, talking about their past, you're exploring their desires, you know these characters so well. So yeah, I'm not mad that I've already read like the length of a full book, 320 pages, and haven't gotten to like a major conflict yet. I'm assuming at this point the major crux of this book, like the major thing that's being explored is Jude and his chronic pain and his just overall deteriorating health condition but more could come up i've never read the synopsis of this book actually i don't know if i said that at the beginning but yeah i never read the synopsis i don't really want to do that now because i'm already so far in and i don't want it to like reveal something that i haven't gotten to yet and then it, i just want to be surprised there's not a lot happening it's not like all these characters are going on one long big journey together it's not like there's one particular character who you're focusing on so much that it's their story I mean it's kind of Jude's story at this point so far but it's mostly just like a friendship for friends over a period of years together living in New York City overall I am enjoying it so far I think it's written extremely well I feel like I know these people it feels like they're my friends I am prepared to be devastated I just feel like that's gonna happen in this last half of the book for sure that's about it for now just finished part four, the axiom of equality. And I feel physically unwell. People aren't kidding when they say this book is heavy. This is the most painful book I've ever read in my life. This is the most painful story I've ever read. And it is very, very, very difficult to get through. I've literally felt like a weight on my chest just reading these sections like it's giving me anxiety it's stressing me out it's making me so sad it's awful it's just so 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 much worse than i imagined now i'm moving into part five which is called the happy years if i had to guess i don't think it's gonna be that happy
was going to keep reading, but I legit feel like I'm just holding my breath when I'm reading that book and I feel like I'm dying. So I'm just gonna make lunch instead and then film a couple videos, take a break from the book, take a breather, and then get back into it. checked in again last night. I did read more of the book though. I got this far in the book so I just have this little bit left. I'm on page 608 out of 815 ish so not too much more to go. Hopefully I can finish this today. I am deep within part five, the happy years now. I only have a little bit left I think until I get to the next section. Oh no, still quite a bit to go in the happy years. But I will say they have been happy. They've been immensely happy years and they've come with their challenges too, but it's been a good time. I've been happy. I have been enjoying the story and I know that that can probably only mean one thing which means it's about to all go downhill from here. The thing with this book is you can tell the whole time. You learn it's like rhythms and patterns. Uh, things will be good for a little while and then they're bad again. And you can sense when something is coming. I'm sensing that things will be coming soon. That's been like this whole vlog is me just being scared that I'm about to be really upset, but we're really getting close to the end now. I know this book shatters a lot of people, so I can only imagine what's gonna happen in the end. Cause it's, to this point, it's just been so much worse than I ever could have imagined anyways. So I don't even wanna make a prediction of what this is gonna be like in the end. I'm just gonna write it out. But first I'm gonna make a cup of coffee. finished a little life yet. It's the next day. Oh my gosh, wait, or is it two days later? I have no concept of time right now, but it is a day or two later <laughs> from the last time you saw me and I got to the end of part five. It was an emotional moment really quickly out of nowhere. All of a sudden it just throws something at you and I was not ready to finish the book yet. It's like, for some reason, this book makes me feel anxious. And I think it's because the whole time you're just anticipating that your heart's gonna be broken. And so you're just waiting for the next sad thing to happen. And that's really hard to read consistently for 800 pages. My goal is now to finish the book tonight, since I only have like 100 pages left in it. And I think I'm gonna keep the camera on in case I do have a reaction to the book. It will be darker because it is it, not the best day. It's really cloudy. It's been dark all day. It's only, it's not even five o'clock and it's already this dark. I'll try to get some lighting, but it, it might not be the best, but I'll do my best for you. So I just got to chapter three in part six. There's still one more part after this. So I have, there's three chapters per part. So I have to finish chapter three. And then there's one more part that I assume will also have three chapters, but it's pretty short. I'm on page 772. So I only have this much left, which doesn't seem like a lot, but it's like almost 50 pages and it's pretty late and I haven't cried. Right now, the story's just kind of like wrapping up 
it's just like a fallout that I would expect. So I don't know, maybe these last 50 pages are really gonna pack a punch, but I'm gonna have to find out tomorrow because I'm tired. <laughs> Okay, so I finished A Little Life. I actually finished it a couple days ago. I like to sit on books like this before I talk about them in full. I'm also in a Christmas sweater because I just filmed a Christmas video. So I'm in a pretty chipper mood talking about this. But yeah, this book was extremely heavy. I wrestled on whether or not I wanted to include spoilers in this video or if I wanted this to be a spoiler free video or kind of a mix of both. While I was reading, I kind of thought I was going to do a segment at the end of this video where I tell you all the spoilers of here's what happened in this book so that you don't have to read it for yourself but because of the content of this book and how severe it is I don't feel comfortable even talking about it and so I won't be including spoilers in this video I just don't know how else to explain this book other than saying it's a lot so I kind of want to just give my general thoughts on this, wrap it up, and sort of answer some frequently asked questions. So to give my perspective first, my general thoughts, I gave this a five-star rating. I don't think it's a perfect book by any means. I just was so viscerally affected by this book that I didn't see any way I could give it anything other than a five-star. It's truly fantastic writing. Like you really, really connect and invest with these characters. They really come to life off of the page. It feels like these are your friends that you're reading about and then your heart breaks for them. It is just truly an experience to read this book. So for me, that just seemed like a five star for me. I also don't think like too deeply into my ratings. I'm not trying to be like a super critical book reviewer. I like to just let my ratings speak more for my investment level or enjoyment level in a book. And so that's how I would rate this book. However, I would also like to add, I would not recommend this book for like 95% of people. This is not a book that I want people to see me give a five-star rating to and then immediately just go read it. I think there's a certain type of reader who wants to read this and a certain type of reader that will be okay getting through this book. I personally wanted to read this because I heard a lot about it on book two. I heard it makes you cry. I wanted to be emotionally destroyed. Like I was ready to have an experience with this book and not everyone's going to want that in a book. Not everyone's going to feel comfortable reading a lot of the things that are in this book. I wasn't comfortable. I was uncomfortable the whole time. So I would definitely say proceed with caution. If you're only mildly interested or not really interested at all, but feel like people are saying that you have to read it, this is not a have to read book. This is not a must read, not an insta read like definitely don't feel the pressure to read this book if that's not something that you're going to i don't want to say enjoy because i didn't enjoy reading this book but if that's not an experience you're seeking to have i will say one of the things that i really enjoyed about this book and the writing was the moments of introspection in the narrative so there are certain times that it really explores, it's very introspective and it really starts exploring what it means to be a friend and what it is to be a family and what it is to live a life, what it is to face mental health challenges, what it is to love someone who faces mental health challenges, how to love someone with trauma, what it's like to experience trauma. I mean, it really just has some very, very deep introspective moments and some really beautiful lines throughout this text that really just made me stop and think and just think about life differently. There's a whole section in here that talks about what it is to be a parent. It talks about how when people say like you have a kid and you have this like instant love for them that is just unexplainable and unequivocal to any other love that you will experience with another human being. And this book, it starts talking about how 
that love is so unique and so passionate because it is driven by fear. Because the second you have a kid, you're responsible for it and you are just so scared that something's going to go wrong, that you're not gonna be able to handle it, that you're not going to put them on the right path, that you're not going to keep them alive. Stuff like that I just think is really interesting to read. It really makes you think. And I think those moments get a little bit, well, a lot a bit overshadowed by the shocking traumatic scenes in this book. I think when I hear people talking about this book, I hear more about the shocking moments and the tears they cried but I haven't really heard many people talk about this book's literary merit in those sorts of moments of introspection which is what I really liked about this book. What a lot of people don't like about this book and what I also take issue with as well is the idea of this book being trauma porn or torture porn. So one of the questions I see a lot of people asking is, is this book actually trauma or torture porn? And if you're not familiar with that term, I'm not an expert on it by any means, but I understand the basic idea of it, which is that the author writes in a way to manipulate the reader and make you really attached to characters and then continuously puts them through a lot of trauma or a lot of torture and exploits their pain in order to make the reader feel more, to make it more impactful. The only experience I've ever had with a book that I thought was bordering on the line of trauma or torture porn was The Great Alone by Kristen Hanna. That was the first experience I had with a book where the characters were just going through it. And this was like 15 times worse than that. I do see an argument of this is exploitative and lots of trauma, lots of torture at the expense of the characters to make the reader feel something. I also, like I said I'm not an expert in this subject and so who am I to say what is or isn't. I know a lot of people when this topic comes up also talk about the idea of like who are we to say there's a line of like when there's too much trauma in a character's life and what's unrealistic amounts of trauma. Like it's not like every person only has one bad thing that happens to them in their life and if you have five bad things then that's just unrealistic and that's torture porn and trauma porn. That is realistic for some people. As sad as that is like everything that happens in this book could very well happen to someone in real life and while it does feel exhausting to read and maybe unrealistic because there's parts of this too where I'm like man how are things going to get worse again and then they do again and again and again it also really just supports the narrative and moves the book forward and fits in with the whole theme and shows you what it's like for someone going through trauma and how that doesn't go away and how that lives in you and eats at you consistently throughout your life. I don't have a clear answer of is this or is this not trauma or torture porn, but I will say if you're not interested in reading a book where a character undergoes large amounts of trauma, large amounts of torture, then I would highly suggest that you stay away from this book because it delivers like no other. Another thing I see about this book a lot now that I've read it, I haven't seen this much before I read it, but once I finished the book and started looking around, I see a lot of people talking about this potentially being the great gay novel. And this is another subject that I am not the one to say if this is the great gay novel or not. But I will say that there are some things that I picked up on in here that may not be the best representation of what it is to be a gay man. Like I said, again, who am I to say what makes the great gay novel? But there are some things in this that I couldn't ignore that would make me wonder if I were to have a critical discussion and if I had to argue whether or not this was the great gay novel, I would probably say no, I don't think so. I think there's probably something that has better representation because in this book, a lot of the gay characters undergo large amounts of trauma and also sexuality isn't often defined in this book. A lot of the sexual experiences that are shown between gay men, as you can assume throughout this book, are not healthy and are heavily traumatic. So I would just say there are perhaps some flaws that would prevent this from being the great gay novel, whatever that is that you claim it to be. But like I said, not an expert. If I see any resources, I will make sure to link them below to kind of send you on your way for exploration. But I just would want to caution people if you think that you have to read this book in order to understand the gay experience. Again, I just wouldn't say this is like a must read. It's for a very specific type of reader. Another conversation that I think is particularly interesting to have with this book is many people say this is a book about 
friendship. However, on the other side of the coin, a lot of people say this is a story about enablers. Again, I don't have an answer for this, but I think it is a very important discussion to have. If you read this book and you're talking about it with people, I think generally this book would just be, I don't want to say great for a book club because not everyone's going to want to read it, but this book incites conversation and thought about certain things. I think this is an interesting book to talk about when it comes to friendship versus enablers. I think there are very clear cut moments in this book where the friends are enabling Jude's behavior. I think there are some moments where the line is a little blurry and that does kind of bring up the conversation of what is it to love someone with trauma? When is love supporting them unconditionally and just doing your best to keep them safe? And when is love letting them go? Not something I have the answer to just an interesting conversation to have. If you want me to get into specifics, I'll do a quick spoiler section here. If you don't want spoilers, pass through this. Also trigger warnings in this section for self-harm, suicidal ideation, and suicide. So for a clear cut example of when is a friend being enabling in this book? The primary character of this book, Jude, inflicts self-harm on himself throughout his life. He has a doctor, Andy, who's like a friend, who is the only one he really trusts to take care of him. And throughout the book, Andy, will count Jude's cuts to kind of monitor if he's doing it more or less. So Andy as his doctor knows that Jude is self-harming when he is doing it more often than not, can kind of see these patterns of when he is more mentally healthy and when he's sort of on a downhill slope. And I would think as a medical professional, no matter how much of a friend you are to this person, like as a medical professional, I think that's when you should step in for medical help, right? Like I think that's, sort of enabling him to continue harming himself if he knows his doctor isn't even gonna say anything to him. But I also see the other side of that where Andy's trying to be a friend to him. He's afraid maybe that if he tries to send Jude to a hospital that they will lose that trust between them. And then what's Jude gonna do if he doesn't have a doctor to kind of monitor him? So it is, it's a blurry line. Then also at the end of this book, after Jude's partner Willem dies, he is just miserable. He isn't very happy through life. He's numb for a while and then he's just, doesn't feel like there's a point anymore. And his adoptive father, Harold, has a moment where he, you get to see his thought process as well of how do I love Jude? Is loving Jude trying to keep him mentally healthy and trying to help him move on and trying to help him live in a life without Willem or is loving Jude letting him go? I know he wants to die. He has lived a terribly exhausting life. Is that more compassionate? I could see both sides of this argument. I mean, there are places in the world where it is legal to, to have assisted suicide for people in certain circumstances. I don't know. I think this is just like a question that nobody has the answer to. I understand how this can be incredibly triggering and incredibly not helpful. I, I see both sides of this. I see the side where it's like, of course you should support him and love him and help him move on and get him mental health help and get him therapy and get him a team of doctors who can support him. Like, of course that is like, I'm not going to ignore that. But the way this book is written, it really just gets you thinking about those things. Like you really, just connect so much to Jude that you also understand his thought process, which leads me to my next point of, is this book dangerous? I think it could be. When we talk about friends versus enablers, I think this book in a way enables the reader if the reader is in a place where they have mental health problems or self-harm because I would say I'm in a good mental health spot right now. I have never been one to self-harm. That is not my position. That's not my perspective. But reading this book and connecting with Jude on so many levels and reading the copious amounts of trauma that he undergoes throughout his life, I understood. Like I felt like there were times where I could really understand how Jude wanted to die so bad. And that's not a thought that I've ever had. Like I have never been in that spot. But I think that if there are readers who have experience with bad mental health, suicidal ideation. I think this book could be very, very, very dangerous to those readers. So that's why I say, I think it's incredibly important to check out the trigger warnings for this. I think it's incredibly important to know if this is a book that's gonna be good for you or bad for you. I think you should just tread carefully with this because it is intense. So finally, the last question that everyone asks that you're probably here to find out. Is a little life worth reading? It's going to depend on what you want to get out of the book, how you are, 
are mentally and what kind of experiences you want to have when reading. If you want to have an experience where for 800 pages, you deeply connect to a cast of characters, so much so that they come off the page for you, they feel super realistic. If you're willing to be with those characters through the absolute lowest points of their life over and over again, if you're willing to follow a main character who has copious amounts of trauma and deals with suicidal ideation and self-harm and eating disorders and lots of very heavy topics, lots of very heavy experiences to go through in life and know that in the end, you're not going to get a happy ending. This is not a book that is going to show you how you can get over trauma. This is a book that shows you how trauma infiltrates the mind of someone, how it feels to live with trauma every day, and how heavy that can be on a person. And you're gonna feel that too when you read this book. Like the way it's written, there's no way you're not going to also be affected by this book. If that's the experience you're looking for, sure. It's worth reading. It's incredibly well written. There are moments of introspection that I think are very interesting and it poses some questions that you may not have thought about before. If any of that sounds uninteresting or intimidating or unhealthy for you, don't feel like you have to read this book. I don't think in any way that this is a must read book. I think it's for a very particular audience. I would not recommend it to 99% of the people I know. Please don't come out of this video and feel any pressure that you should read this too. I see a lot of people recommend this book and say it's so great, but I think there is a lot you should know when you're being recommended this book. And I don't think you can just like blanket recommend this book to people. Like I said at the beginning, I've put all the trigger and content warnings that I picked up on and researched in the description box below. If there's anything I missed, please do let me know in the comments so I can make sure to add that in there for people who need that. But yeah, I think I hit on everything that I wanted to talk about with this. So that is all that I have to say about A Little Life. I am glad that I read it. I wish I would have known more about the trigger warnings before reading the book, but that's on me. I didn't research too much into that before I went in because I wanted to know it, go in not really knowing anything. I hope you enjoyed watching this vlog. It's not a very enjoyable book so it feels weird to say like enjoyed this vlog but I hope you got something out of this video I hope it helped you decide whether or not you should read it or if you have read it I hope there were some discussion topics in the end that you're interested in as well and feel free to leave a comment down below on anything I talked about in this video if there's anything critical that you think I left out or misinterpreted or maybe presented in a bad way I definitely would love for that to be in the comments as well like I said this is just a very sensitive book and I just want to make sure the message that I am giving is as helpful as possible. But that is it for me. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!